The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. It's better than indoor plumbing. It's better than electricity. It's better than the thermos bottle. That's right. It's the 2017 Matt Talk Online Digital Fan Guide Division One Preview. Simply calling it the guide. Over 200 pages digitally delivered to you March 14th. Pre-sale, pre-orders available now. MattTalkOnline.com slash FanGuide17. Listening to this show, you will get $5 off if you use the offer code PODCAST. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T. Offer code when you buy it at MattTalkOnline.com slash FanGuide17. Over 200 pages of facts, stats, history, Every single wrestler competing in St. Louis, every single score all season long. History, four-time All-Americans, three-time national champions. Who's got the most All-Americans all time? Which coach has the most titles? How do they rank top 10? Everything in this guide, digitally delivered, optimized for your tablet and iPad, but it works just fine on your computer. And if you feel like going to Kinko's, you can print it out. It's going to be a lot of paper. But anyway... Retailing at nineteen ninety nine. You listen to this show, this show, and any show on the Mad Talk Podcast Network with regularity. Use the promo code. I'm gonna say it really lightly now. Podcast. Yep. Use podcast that way. I know you're listening. You'll save five bucks. It is worth it. ESPN loves it. You've heard my sound bites on other shows about how much Adam Amin used this thing when he was the ESPN. I'm gonna stop belaboring the point right now, and we'll get to our show. But MattTalkOnline.com slash Fan Guide Seventeen. The guide, this thing, the most unbelievable Division One preview guide ever assembled, and it just keeps getting better every year. You'll want it for your fantasy contests. You'll want it for your knowledge bombs. You'll want it sitting there in the arena going, okay, hey, how's who's this guy? Boom, there he goes. Also got tweet your, your direct social media stuff right to it. There's It's an interactive guide. You'll be able to pop up a podcast that's, that's related to who's going on and what's going on. You just... You, You'll want to get this. MattTalkOnline.com slash FanGuide17, promo code podcast. Save yourself five bucks. You will not regret it. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Mario Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendrick. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. Now up with Penn State head wrestling coach Cale Sanderson as we head into National Duels weekend and the closing parts of the regular season. Before we even get going, I got to say that this—I did something unethical to get this interview. I did bribe Coach Sanderson, and uh, and Cale, what 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 exactly did I bribe you with to uh, to give you the uh, opportunity to come on this show? And, and you'd be you'd be willing to do it? Well, I have to believe it's the uh, the case of uh, Hostess Lemon Pies that. Are in our office right now, right? You mean they're not gone That's yet? Got to be from you. Varner's been working on them. I mean, he's uh, it's, it's hard to keep keep his pace and 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 just crushing those things, but um, they're still there. Yeah, I mean, a case of pies. That's. Yeah, you know, that's a, that's a lifetime supply there. Yeah, see, I didn't even know how many came in a case. But uh, just for backstory, folks, Kale and I were were in a discussion. Believe it or not, I think it was about the national duels about three, four years ago, and actually it was four <laughs> years ago because it was right before the Olympic trials in twelve. And we we got to a point. I was like, "How about this? If I if I need an interview, I'll, I'll give you a fruit pie." And you go, "Deal." So after the Olympic trials, Varner wins it. I have a fruit pie in my car specifically for this purpose. And I was still working at USA Wrestling. And I, well, I, I can't find you. I, give, I see Varner. I go, hey, give this to Kale. And then about an hour later, I get a text, hey, thanks for the pie. So that just kind of cemented this thing. So last year, I was like, you know, after you came on the show, after we had talked to the Minnesota State Tournament, I was like, you know what? Let's, let, 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 let's come full circle on this. So I get on Amazon and I send kale a box of lemon fruit pies because i thought that was the favorite favorite one it was co- completely a gag but now that I've, we're coming through and, and making good on the agreement so uh fruit pies equal interview with kale so all of you that are trying to go through pat dong guy like you're supposed to there's a secret way to get kale an interview and it's fruit pies so i just that's just want to put that out there i mean the, the secret's out now yeah thanks a lot for that i get harassed about fruit pies all the time and um i think i tweeted once that i was you know 
something about uh, the only thing better than one lemon pie is two or something, and that was like five years ago. But um, it, it's a weekly uh, occurrence. Somebody mentioned the fruit pie to me. So, and thanks for keeping that alive. I appreciate it. it means a lot. <laughs> hey, you know, some some people, Funny, so. you know, they they never forget. And uh, the, the, the one thing you know. I did have a question about this this is. I, I neglected to put a return address on it. So how quickly did you figure out that this was me? Oh, I knew who it was right away. There's no, <laughs> there's no question about that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, well, Surprise, we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna talk about a couple topics today. Of course, that one thing you know that uh, we're probably gonna talk about, uh, you know, the thing that's that's gonna happen. But uh, we haven't had a chance to really talk about uh, Frank Molinero's performance representing the Nittany Line Wrestling Club and Team USA at the Olympic Games. You were sitting about five seats behind me in in Rio, and we're actually very vocal. Uh, among other things, of course, uh, Franklin Gomez, we can go down that rabbit hole um, to get you really fired up. But uh, when, when it looks when you look at Frank's performance and his, I guess people love to use the term jump levels. Now, when he moved from one level to you know being the eight seed at the Olympic trials to being just inches away, literally inches away from a bronze medal at the Olympic Games. When you look back at his progression, what do you think the keys to that were? Uh, I think I think his mindset uh, w- was everything, and I, I think uh, um, really I think that comes from him and his uh, his relationship with God, basically, and the way he viewed that and, and his approach, and and I mean that that changed everything. Um, just his his gratitude, and and uh, I know you're probably not supposed to talk about stuff like that. Um, but that, that's the truth. And, you know, so everything changed with him and his mindset, he is much more relaxed and focused. And, um, you know, he made some very, uh, uh, just, just some, some, he was just very disciplined. He changed his, his, uh, his, his body weight, you know, so, so he could compete better right after weighing. He, you know, he shrunk up a little bit and, um, just things that are really difficult to do. Um, but, but he just loves wrestling. I mean, even, even every day he's in there trying to learn something new and he's working on something and, and, uh, he's, he's always been a fierce competitor. He's always been, um, just, just a guy that's going to work his, his, his tail off every day. But I think, you know, you, you have to have, if you don't have that bigger picture and you don't understand um, the reality of why we're here and, and um, you know, life's hard. It, it's hard. That's by design, right? So um, and I think that, that that was it for him. And I think he'd tell you the same thing. Yeah, and of course, you've also got an interesting dynamic in, in the room there in the offseason or, or the, the senior level, uh, the world-class athlete programs, men's freestyle programs now working out of State College. You've got Franklin Gomez working in there for years. You had Jaime Espinal. You've also got this Japanese dude that's pretty good, just won an Olympic medal in there with you, too. And, uh, you know, explain what that international feel is like for the wrestlers in the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club. Well, it, it's 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 great. I mean, uh, we have Yonamitsu Tatsuhiro, who's an Olympic champion. Um, unbelievable. You know, Google him, watch his matches. Just and he's such a tough kid, nicest kid you'd ever meet. Um, but he's uh, just a, a crazy tough competitor. Um, and and having Gomez here, you know, obviously he went to Michigan State, was a national champion there, so he's been wrestled in uh, Florida. So you know he has more of an American feel in his wrestling. Um, but but we, yeah, we want we want to get our guys every every possible um, exposure that they can to to what they're preparing for. And having those guys around, it just it ups our level. And it's it's friendly competition, but it, you know you're training to to be the best in the world. So um, to do that, it, it helps to have the best in the world. Um, there on, on a on a regular basis and and we're fortunate uh you know to have that yeah what's the WCAP program I mean we were we were talking earlier that it's still small right now and and for those who are familiar with the world-class athlete program the army really it was based based out of Fort Carson Colorado a lot of heavy emphasis on Greco and women's freestyle um the men's freestyle was just was kind of there there were some athletes concentrating on it how do you think that's going to be a game changer for for the senior level not just uh the Nittany Lion Wrestling Club but men's freestyle as a whole to have you know, a, a dedicated freestyle spot for, for the WCAP to train out of? Well, um, I, I think it can be a, a huge uh, advantage, you know, for our country. Obviously, it's great for us that it's it's out of out of, uh, out of of Penn State right now, and they're training here. You know, it started with guys like Moza Fay, and, um, you know, he was one of the original freestyle guys. Um, but, but the opportunity is, is tremendous. It's just not something that I think people realize is available, one, and then um, in freestyle – kids 
graduate from college and they have a lot of opportunities to um, get paid to train at their universities, um, right? So, so there hasn't been the need necessarily that Greco has had, um, or or even in women's wrestling. So, you know, they've really blossomed. But really, all you know, WCAP is you, you go to basic training and uh, you go through the process, and then your assi- your assignment is is to wrestle because you know wrestling is a huge. Uh, uh, market uh, for for the military, they 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 put a lot of dollars and and they they know the value of wrestlers and they want as many wrestlers in the military as possible and so they look at it as as an advertising piece. So um, if you're a competitive senior level guy, you have the chance to um, you know wrestle for the WCAP. You have to go through the process, but they pay you well, just like you're you know serving the country, which you are, but you're serving by wrestling and being competitive. Um, at that senior level, uh, and it's uh, it's it, it helps to promote the the military and and uh, advertise for them and to help them to get the get their name out there. Shifting gears to this season, uh, one thing that's been a, kind of a, a hallmark of Penn State programs, a lot of it came through when Ed Ruth and David Taylor were putting up massive bonus points, was the fact that. Your teams are putting up big bonus points this year, no exception. Jason Nolf, Bo Nickel, Zane Rutherford, Mark Hall, and, and just those four really putting up the big ones. But, I mean, Nick Nebels, Nick Suriano, they're, they're putting up big bonus points as well. Talk about wrestling being fun. What is it about this group of guys that seems to be like, do you ever look back and scratch your head and be like, man, these, these guys are really putting up a lot of points? Well, we know we have a, a very special group of guys right now, and um uh, Zane and and Nolf and Bo and 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 you know Hall and Suriano and and everyone you mentioned um, Neville's uh, these guys just love to wrestle and uh, it, it's you know we've talked about it before but it's even it's it's about being bigger than just trying to win and lose of course we want to win I mean everyone knows you want to win that's um, you know you, you have goals and you want to reach those goals but you know if you, if you enjoy what you're doing um, you know let that show and the way you compete and and you know don't try to um, there's times you're going to win a close match, but if you have the chance to score additional points, do it because that's, um, you know, that's that's it's going to help you in the long run. Uh, as you score more points, you're going to get better. That's just the way it works. And then it's also uh, it, it's great for the team and the guys feed off of each other and they're competing as a team. They want to win as a team. And if you put the team ahead of yourself, you're going to do better. I mean, you know, everyone knows those kind of things, but it's it's. Uh, easy to say hard to implement and hard uh to, to actually i guess do and we're, we're very grateful fortunate that we have kids that are wrestling with that with that effort and that mindset right now and it, it's uh it, it's very important to us when you look at the decision to pull mark hall out of his red shirt there was a lot a lot of monday morning quarterbacking about it there it was rumored that oh, does he do it does he not do it uh they're going to do it if they only have a chance to win there, you know there's so many factors that go into this when you're looking at this from a coaching standpoint and going through this and you've got a phenom come through and you've had a couple couple of like guys like that. I mean, you know, obviously David redshirted when he was there uh, and so did Ed, but when when you look at the talents like that, is it is it a situation of them being like they've got to be ready? I mean, it's obviously clear that Mark Hall's ready, but how much of the national championship is in is in the athlete's mind when you guys sat down and had this discussion? Well, I think you have to uh, you have to factor in a lot of different things, right? Um, and and we we obviously did, and and uh, but ultimately it comes down to to him. Is he ready? Like you said, is he ready? Is he ready physically? You know, because that's something that uh, true freshmen are going to struggle with. Are they? Uh, you know, mature enough physically to compete with, uh, you know, at the next level? Or are they technically skilled enough to compete at the next level? And, uh, you know, we, we obviously felt that, that Mark is and was, and, and uh, but it depends on what he thinks and what he feels. And, you know, he's got to be passionate about it. You know, he's got to want to, uh, to, to, to put it out there and put it on the line and to step up and and he he wanted to do that and and uh, hats off to him and you know we're I'm very proud of him and you know we're very proud of him we had some we had some great guys uh, behind him that were both uh, you know potential All Americans that were you know unbelievable kids Gino Morelli is winning all kinds of academic awards right now you know uh, just for, for you know that says a lot obviously um, um, Shakur is a great kid works his tail off just. Um, but it just, you know, sometimes you have to make tough decisions and, and, uh, and you go with it and, and Mark, 
Mark was on board and and he has had time to kind of you know get things in order as far as getting getting a little bit better shape, get a little bit stronger, you know, get get his mind a little bit sharper before the nationals. And so uh, yeah, we obviously pulled the trigger, and I think it was the right decision. I think Mark believes, and I mean, there's, it's it's done, so it's the right decision. It's just you know now he needs to wrestle and go get what he uh, what he wants to get. What's that conversation like with Gino Morelli? Uh, he's a senior. He came in from Pittsburgh. It had been wrestling very well this season. I mean, Shakur's still got a couple of years, but uh, you know, how do you have that conversation with a senior, a guy that's that's come into your program? He's won some big matches. He was definitely improving. Uh, well, it's tough. I mean, that's when I talk to him, I just say, hey, you know, you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, we, you know, we love you. We think you're doing a great job. We love the effort and everything that you're putting into it. Um, and we feel like you, you, you know, you certainly have a chance to win and score points at the national tournament. Um, but, you know, we feel like Mark has a better chance to score more points um, just based on history and what, you know, our, our experience. And, and I mean, I, I didn't have, I didn't have uh, anything other than, you know, you just, just tell them the truth. Right. And, and it's tough, but you know, he's a great kid and, um, and, you know, he, he, uh, you know, he handled it, he handled it well. It's, you know, obviously disappointed and, and, uh, but he's been great. He's, he keeps coming to practice with a great attitude. He's a guy we're traveling and we're going to have him with us all the way, you know, through the end. And uh, he's a big piece of, the program and, and um, making sure these guys are ready now, making sure Mark's ready, making sure Bo's ready, Vincenzo's ready, all the guys around his weight class. But yeah, it's a tough conversation. It's not, there's, you know, this is the sport of wrestling. You can't really hide anything. You know, I mean, he sees what I see and, and, um, you know, and he, you know, it, so it, it, there's just no way around it. You just, you know, just be honest and let the cards fall where they may and let's, you know, it is what it is. Now, going back in time, when, when David Taylor was a freshman, there were a couple different things that were preventing him from uh, probably being in this same type of discussion. One, uh, Bubba was there as, as a previous national finalist, and two, your, your brother Kyler transferred in from Iowa State. So uh, I know this is a rough hypothetical, but say you say Bubba and Kyler, I mean, if, if, if it's just David in the room and he's there, are, are you pulling the trigger on him as a freshman if, if you don't have uh, your brother and the Bubba drama going on? Well, it. There's a lot of factors that play into it, right? I mean, you're, you're talking about your team. I mean, we didn't have a legit chance to win a national championship in 2010, right? I mean, we took ninth, I think, and we had a decent tournament at the Nationals. Um, and David Taylor's different. I mean, he, he he was wrestling in the 30s as a senior in high school, right? And he, he still was kind of you know, like, a you know, growing into his body, and he still is to this day, which, you know, that's uh, – um, it's scary you know, to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's still growing and he's, you know, he's now feeling good at, at, at 86, um, where his coordination and his timing and his conditioning, everything's falling into place. Um, but yeah, it was just different. You know, he, he didn't have, he wasn't physically, um, ready to, he, he would have done well, right? I mean, he would have done well. There's no question about that, but it just wasn't the right decision for the team. I don't think it was the right decision for him at that time. And, uh, so everything, uh, you know, there's a lot of different factors and, you know, I get a lot of emails or was getting emails about people saying this and that, and just thinking, well, you know, you know, we're here, we've got a pretty good eye on what's going on. Right. And we, you know, we, we want to win. You don't have to, you don't have to question whether the coach ever wants to win. You know, that's my job, but you also have to do the right thing for the kids and the program and the, and, and, and then sometimes you just have to make tough decisions. Sometimes you, you screw up and you don't make the right decisions. Sometimes you do, but, um, you know, that's part of the fun of the job. I mean, you, you gotta make tough decisions and move forward with it. With these type of decisions, what do you think it's going to take for for people to look at you as Kale Sanderson, the coach, versus Kale Sanderson, the athlete? It took Gable, you know, twenty one Big Ten titles, where you know you can't say Coach Gable's name without putting the word legendary in front of it. I think it's a prerequisite. It might be legally changed to legendary Coach Dan Gable. When you look at your career right now as a coach, you've got the national championships. You've had uh, obviously the storied career, which if, if if you've been living under a rock for the past fifteen years, uh, this guy never lost a college match uh, in his four years. Uh, save the redshirt year. We won't even go into that. But uh, the question I guess I'm getting at is when do you think you're going to be basically look <laughs> well, at yourself? Why you go into it then, man? Well, a factual, factual, no, factual accuracy. Yeah. You know, if I, as soon as I say it, you know. I don't, what, it is what it is again, right? So I, <laughs> yeah, it's the trivia um, question that comes up about your true freshman year. But as, as yeah. I get back to the original question, 
when do you think people are going to start looking at you as as a great coach more so than than a great athlete? Do you have you started to look at yourself that way, or what do you think it's going to take for you for the public to 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 feel that you've earned that that particular title? You know, I I really don't care. I, you know, I don't. I I I've been hired to do a job at Penn State, and I'm going to do the best job that I can. I'm not worried about. Um, I'm not worried about my career as an athlete or, you know, what, you know, I did the best that I could. And yeah, there's, you know, I'm competitive. I wish I would have done better in, in, in certain areas, but it, you know, it, yeah, I've learned from it. I moved on and I'm going to get better and do better in life and be stronger and be a better coach because of it. And, you know, as a coach, I'm just, I just want to do the best job that I can. And, and, uh, and, you know, it's not me. We have an incredible staff with coach Cody and coach Casey and Varner now, and Adam Lynch is our director of ops. Um, and it's, it's really, you know, we, it, you know, we, we get together and it's, it's, it's the four of us making decisions and, you know, we're, it, it's not me, you know, I mean, I, I'm ultimately, obviously I'm responsible for, you know, what, what, what's done and said and, and, uh, but I'm just, I'm going to do the best job that I can, uh, and I'm going to, uh, and live what I what I preach with my kids, you know, and be the example to them that I'm t- everything I'm telling them to do, you know, I have to do the same. And and uh, you know, our coaches have that to do the same thing, Cody and Casey and Jake, and they are, um, and that's why we're successful right now. But you know, what people say or about me as a coach, it's not it's not important to me. Yeah, you've only been at Penn State since uh, let's see if my if my timeline's right the 9 two thousand ten season as you're saying and uh, a couple years prior to that at Iowa State. And, and you're two months older than me, so we're both thirty seven. How long do you see yourself as a Division one head coach? Because we're seeing people getting their first coaching jobs at you know forty eight forty nine their first chance to to be a head coach, and we're looking at okay maybe maybe they got twenty years in it in terms of retirement age or, or performance or whatever. How long do you see yourself as a head coach at Penn State? Well, I don't know the answer to that either. I think, um, you know, if you want to be the, as competitive as possible, you know, it's, it's, uh, you I mean, you got to be sprinting every day, right. And, and all winter long, all summer long. Um, and that takes a lot of fire and passion and, and, uh, and I have that still, and I want to keep being the best and, and we want to keep building and in all aspects of the, of the program. And when, when I don't have that fire anymore, then I, I, you know, I probably won't coach, um, you know, I don't, because somebody does, there's somebody out there that does it, um, you know, whether, but I don't, I don't know when that is, is that, is that 10 years or 15 years, 20 years? I, I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, last question on the coaching thing, and this, this is going to go back to your own matter. How interested are you in, in what Iowa State selects as a head coach moving forward after Kevin, Kevin Jackson announced that he was going to step down after this year? Uh, well, obviously I follow it. I mean, I, uh, you know, I've got a lot of good friends that, um, that follow it and, you know, I stay in touch with them and they're, um, but, uh, it just, I don't have a lot of time to, to, to focus on, you know, what's going on anywhere other than, than, than Penn state right now. And I have two, two sons and, um, but yeah, I want Iowa state to be, I want Iowa state to be great. I mean, that's where I went to school and it's, it's very special to me. Um, it helps us, obviously, as uh, um, as a lot of our competitors are, are very close to Iowa State, Iowa, Minnesota, Nebraska, Missouri. I mean, we want Iowa State to be as, as good as possible, selfishly, as a Penn State head coach uh, as well. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you know, we want, you know, Iowa State wrestling should be great. Uh, it has been, and it's a big part of college wrestling and the history of college wrestling, and, and needs to be a big part of the, the future of college wrestling. So, yeah, it's important. Speaking of important uh, Big 12 programs, as we gear up for February 19th, you're going to take your team down to Stillwater to take on uh, the top ranked Oklahoma State Cowboys. And I say top ranked because it depends on the poll you look at. The coaches' poll has yeah. Oklahoma State 1, Penn State 2. Uh, I know that Penn Penn State, Pat Dongai, your SID, has pretty much been using intermatch rankings since uh, even before, you know, when I was still there. So, uh, you know, you'll see Penn State releases saying Penn State number one, Oklahoma State number two. That's basically irrelevant. Uh, it's one versus two no matter who you look at. And when you look yeah. at the – you've got the storied program of Oklahoma State, the rising tide of, of the legacy you're building in Penn State – from a, just a wrestling fan standpoint, this should be just a, just a barn burner, exciting dual meet. I mean, how excited are you to be able to be in the midst here at Gallagher Iba 
to to be coaching in this type of situation against one of the legends of the sport, John Smith, with Penn State, Oklahoma State. This is a big deal. Yeah, it is. It's it's uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, um, John Smith, uh, Oklahoma State, just incredible program. Uh, obviously, an incredible coach and so much success in in all all levels. And uh, yeah, I mean, Oklahoma State has how many national championships in wrestling? I mean, it's it's a lot. You know, um, I you believe they're they're thirty four and counting is the name of their wrestling message board. So, okay, well that's that's a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you, you go in their wrestling room and they have their you know their national champions up on the wall and it, and it is like a hall of fame USA wrestling hall of fame and they just have they've had so much success and and uh so it, it's 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 a, a lot of fun um we're looking forward to it i mean every matchup's huge and uh every matchup is tough 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 and that's uh you know that's why you do what we do, right? I mean, it's you can't watch the the national football championship and the you know the big time basketball games and 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 see the crowds and the excitement and not want to be a part of events like that. Well, th- you know, this is a, an opportunity for our kids to be, you know, a part of a big big dual meet, a big uh, a big matchup, and you know we're fortunate to have um, a lot of the not a lot, but you know we're, we're at Ohio State when they have over fifteen thousand this year, and Iowa had probably over 15,000. Um, so it's, uh, and we, you know, our own match, we had over 15,000 this year at BJC against Lehigh and every, you know, our matches are all, uh, sold out. And so it's, uh, it's, it's exciting. That's what we love to do. We love to wrestle. And if you love to wrestle, you want to wrestle in front of as many people as possible. Right. And that's, uh, you know, that's what we get to do on Sunday. What match do you think you're most looking, if you were to take yourself out of the coaching chair for a moment and say, all right, what match do I want to see as a wrestling fan the most? Is there one that you, you would kind of circle and be like, yeah, that one. That's the, that's the big one in this dual meet. You know, I I can't take myself out of the <laughs> coaching circle because that's what I'm doing. And, and uh, every match is is equally important, right? I mean, if you have a chance to get a bonus point, if you have if you have a, a chance to win a close match, uh, they're they're important. So I, uh, I I I'd have a hard time taking a step back right now and trying to think which matches would be more fun to watch. I mean, guys that are fun to watch are fun to watch, right? Um, but for my seat, it's uh, every match is is, uh, is equally important, whether it's, it's a fun match to watch or not. Now, you, you mentioned the big crowds. What's it like when you guys are on the bench there and you're you're going into a Carver-Hawkeye, you're going into to the shot, you're going into a, a facility that you know, one, you're usually the biggest draw. It's you, uh, Iowa, and Oklahoma State. Usually when they go on the road, those are the biggest draws as visiting teams to go into a hostile environment and, and have the opportunity to kind of just neutralize the crowd, to be like, okay, yeah, they're, they're here, they're excited, they think they're going to win, and then, oh, boom, there's a fall, or there's a tech fall, or in case like Zane Rutherford gets taken down a couple times and gets a tech fall. That's, that's got to be disheartening for a fan base to watch, you know, one of their top five guys, yeah, yeah, oh, what's, what's, you know, what is that energy like on the, on the sideline when you guys do that to a home crowd of that size? Well, it's uh, you know you have to do that. I mean, that's if you, you, you get you get the crowd into the match, then you know the crowd usually does affect the officiating, um, and it's just something that. Uh, but uh, you know, it, it's what you want to do, right? I mean, who doesn't want an opportunity to go, uh, you know, wrestle a big match and, and win a big match, uh, it, you know, it, on the road uh, in front of a you know, a hostile crowd. I mean, that's, you know, that's what you should be, you know, little kids think about making that final three point shot or, or whatever it might be, you know, that this is, this is an opportunity like that. Um, but it's just go wrestle, be focused. I, I just think of it more like, you know, what, what tremendous life experiences these are for kids to have to really dig deep and to, to be, be, stay focused on what they want um, one-on-one in a tough fighting type situation against a tough competitor in, um, you know, in, in a, a sold-out arena with 15,000 people. I mean, that, that's uh, – yeah, that's going to uh, reveal some character quickly, right? And and experiences like that are, are priceless. So I think I think it's great. Yeah, we want to win, and you know that's that's the goal to be the best we can be. But you know, if you take a step back and just to think of the experience that these guys have um, and the opportunity they have, it's uh, it's it's very special. This 
dual meet presented itself based on the the NWCA national duels, uh, the national duel series, uh, the second year of this concept, and, and one that uh, you know you and your brother Cody have kind of led the charge on at least prior to its implementation, or at least this concept. Uh, as as the matchups shake out now. Um, there are a lot of good matchups here, but there are still some things that, that left, uh, again, you, you scratching your head and you actually logged on to Twitter for the first time in four months to, uh, to post about the projected matchups. And, uh, how does this differ from what you believed the actual plan of action should have been or would have been? Well, I think it was, it's real clear. I mean, the plan was to be, to make your, your season count and each match count, you have to go, uh, straight across the board, right? So the number one Big Ten team is going to have the number one non-Big Ten team, and then down the line, right? I mean, that's the way it was designed to be, right? If you only do the number one versus number two, well, yeah, that's a great matchup, and this is a very special year because you have a legit one and two, and there's a lot of excitement. You know, we haven't seen them. They haven't seen us. It's, you know, it's uh, it, it's it's a big deal. Um, but if, if, if it's just one and two and then everything else is a free for all, well, that, ta- you know, that defeats the purpose of what, uh, the, you know, the, the original intent of, of, of this was. So, and, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to call anybody out in any way. I mean, I, that's the last thing I want to do. And if I do that, I feel like a, a big jerk and, you know, I mean, that's, uh, but you know, really, so if you don't go down the board, and, and Iowa should be Russell, Virginia Tech, and but, you know, we understand there's a history there. They don't want to wrestle for whatever reason. That's fine. All right, then wrestle the next team, right? And then Ohio State, bump up, wrestle Virginia Tech. But it shouldn't just be a free-for-all, right? Because now, now you're saying it just doesn't make sense, right? Because... Uh, it's, it's, yeah, one and two is great, but every match should be important. Just like the national tournament, just because you, you know, you lose and you don't, you're not in the finals. It doesn't mean you just forfeit out and just, you know, you wrestle back for third, right? So third, third place is, it's not Ricky Bobby where it's, Hey, it's first or last kind of a deal. I don't think, I mean, that's not, that doesn't, that doesn't, uh, fulfill the purpose of, you know, the original intent, which is to make every match count. And it matters if you're second or third, and it matters if you're fourth or fifth, because, um, but free for all doesn't doesn't help that out. One, that's the first Talladega Nights reference we've had on the show in a long, long time. Uh, so one yeah, uh, b- bonus point for that now, because uh, hey, hey, it's good, good. Every time I do an interview, I got a kid. He's trying to push the microphone up, and I'm trying to, you know, anyway. But uh, <laughs> when we look at the, the matchups yeah. here, and of course the the Virginia Tech Iowa thing has been beaten like a dead horse for for all, for oh, for a decade now. So I think it's pretty clear that there's 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 a situation there that somebody does or doesn't want to wrestle. Um, you know, Virginia Tech, but we look at the, the duels format as a whole, uh, you know, the, the concept is okay. We can mix matchups. So there, there, I can see an Ohio state not wrestling Virginia Tech because, well, that would have probably put Nebraska in line with NC state. They've already wrestled. And then you've got situations where, as you say, the, the regular season means something Northern Iowa wins the Mac that really wasn't expected. Uh, and then they handled Missouri in the dual meet with, you know, basically wrestling well above what what people expected, and so now then we got the MAC not in because I believe Missouri was the only team in the MAC that that signed a contract. So contractually, what was what were the terms? And, and as Coach Dresser said on Inside Virginia Tech Wrestling, it's not like this was a super binding thing because the NWCA doesn't have any type of control like that. But the verbiage in the contract, I mean, what teams are you aware that were that were in it? I know there's some, been some Big Ten teams that have opted out, uh, and that's obviously their prerogative. But what's going to make this kind of thing uh, have to have some teeth? So we all right, this is this is where you want to go. Well, I think it, you know, it, it does have to be a binding contract. I think, um, you know, I'm not going to get into the details and, uh, you know, we signed a contract and, and, uh, but, it, but it wasn't, it, it, I think they were, they were probably kind of messing with each contract individually. Um, you know, cause we had a contract and then they came back and wanted to change it. And, and, uh, that was last year. Uh, and you know those kind of things don't work. You sign a contract, but but I just I feel like you know if you say you're going to do something, you do it, right? This is what we agreed to do. Let's do it. Don't don't you don't have to have a contract for that. I mean, I understand. You, yeah, we do. We find out you do, but you know if you say you're going to do something, let's do it, right? That's the way it should be. Um, and and because the whole point of this was to um, eliminate the push to change our current March championship. That's the, the whole, you know, that's, that, that was the, the whole purpose here. So, um, so my whole point in getting on this and, 
you know, I don't want to be talking about this right now. Obviously, I don't want to be tweeting about it. You know, I, I, I'm not a big fan of Twitter or social media at all. Um, but if you're trying to push to change our our championship season, my my point is, well, you can't use this to say, well, see, told you, all right, we got to give it to the NCA. We, you know, or if you are fighting against change in the current championship. Well, what are you doing? Let's go. You know, you can't not participate and not do what you're supposed to do. And then, and then because you're just giving fire and fuel to those trying to push the, to change the, the, our March championship. And that's what it's been from the beginning, right? Even before, uh, you know, we didn't participate in the national dual championship. And the reason we didn't was because the whole push and the talk behind the scenes, the guy sitting in my office is saying, hey, the idea here is we want to build this up so we can give it to the NCA, right, and have them take it. And we say, well, I don't want that. We don't agree with that. And so we're not going to participate, right? So it's the same fight. It's just a different form. And, you know, obviously, I think this is a fun event. I think there's a lot of talk, but it's not fun if there's only a couple teams participating. And it's not fair to the teams either if only a couple teams are participating. You know, we're going to wrestle Oklahoma State, and, uh, you know, other title contending teams aren't taking, a, you know, a similar type of matchup. Well, that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Um, and if it, the role was reversed, you know, the other, the other teams would probably be like, what the heck's going on here as well? So, yeah, I could talk and talk just a rabbit hole that, uh, seems to never end, but it would be nice if it would. One thing that I've noticed that seems to be a, a little different in terms of uh, maybe the, the angst on where it's coming from certain programs, it seems like this year the angst is more directed at certain uh, programs versus the, the NWCA. It, it's, is, am, I, am I wrong in reading that? Because last year you were really all over uh, Moyer and the NWCA about the event, whereas this year it's like, well, you got it wrong. This is what it should be. And it seems like the, the blame seems to be defla- – Coach Dresser was all over the NWCA last year about it too. And it seems like the, the focus of the, the questions don't seem to be on Mike as much this year as they were last year. Yeah, I uh, – you know, Mike Moyer – he does. He does a great job. I mean, he has a tough, tough job. I mean, in it, in a situation like this, you know, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? He's he's just uh, so. You know, the whole the whole you know pick on the NWCA. I, I don't think that's the right thing to do. I, I think they and I, I think you know in my conversations with uh, uh, with Mike is that. You know they they they're they're fine being done. They you know they with with the national dual format and and this this whole event and just moving forward. And he, he's trying to build wrestling. I mean that's what he's trying to do. I mean the the programs that are being saved and the programs that are being added. I mean that's because they're working. He's working tire 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 tirelessly behind the scene. It's a tough word right there. Um, but yeah, it's not it's not an NWCA thing. I think originally a few years ago. I mean. Um, they were trying to push the change in the, the the current format because they believed that was the right thing to do, right? I mean, we don't and others don't, and that's why we fought against it. Maybe we're wrong. I don't think so, but you know, um, but now I don't think they're they're not fighting or pushing um, that agenda. I think it's other individuals. I think the NCA wants uh, at least the NCA wrestling committee. I mean, they're looking at. Uh, you know the the numbers and saying, hey, we're not going to be making money in three years at the national championship. We need another event, um, and I don't think that's a good enough reason to change our championship, right? I mean, there's other ways to do it, but yeah, don't. It's not a Mike Moyer and the NWCA. They do a great job, and you know, it'd be nice. I mean, the the wrestling needs help. Like that's what I've talked about with scholarships, and you know, there's political issues that really are, have just destroyed male Olympic sports and, you know, we're wrestling stayed strong, but, you know, we need to continue to fight that and fight it politically, not necessarily, we don't want to be fighting amongst ourselves and saying, Hey, this coach is a, you know, this coach is a butthead and that one's a butthead and I'm, I'm not a butthead, but you know, I mean, it's just like, it's just, uh, it's, it's exhausting. It's getting old. We don't need that. I mean, we, we're all friends and, you know, we'd all, uh, hang out and go fishing together. Maybe, I don't know, but, um, but we need to we need to probably get on the same page if that's going to even happen, or just drop it. Let's just be done with it and start fresh. That's why why can't we do that? 
you know, one question I have is in terms of like, you know, what is right for each team? It seems like there is a team first, sports second mantra with, 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 you know, I don't, I don't want to point out any coach. I think the entire sport seems to have that issue. Whereas some years it'll be like, yeah, oh yeah, this is good for the sport. We're going to do it this way. And then, well, the next year, uh, our, this doesn't work with our team. How, uh, you know, it's not just focused on uh, Iowa, Oklahoma State and Penn State, because those have three personalities that tend to have very big followings. And, you know, what, what Kale says, the Penn State faithful are going to believe what John says, the Oklahoma the state faithful are going to believe what Tom says. The Iowa faithful are going to believe it's, you know, there, there's that type of support for those programs. Can you have a legitimate national championship, like dual meet type of situation? If one of those three teams, or if it's Minnesota, when they're in the top three, can you, you've got to have the, the buy-in from everybody. I mean, how is that maybe the knock on this system is, you know, because John's bailed out, you've bailed out. I was bailed out in the past. I mean, what is it going to take to get, you know, the big programs that really, they say they put the butts in the seats. They sell tickets to get on the same page. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I th- it's human nature, right? It's human nature to, I mean, my job is to take care of Penn state wrestling. Um, everyone's got the same job um, with the, but I think you can be consistent, right? I think we're consistent, right? I mean, it doesn't mean we're always right, but we're consistent on what we believe and what, what we're doing. I think that's important. Um, but yeah, I don't have the answer. I mean, I'm not going to say well we should just go to a dual meet format. I mean, why? Why? I mean, yeah, if you make the and that's what they're saying behind the scenes, they're pushing say, hey, well, as soon as you you have a dual championship that carries points over the nationals or is the team championship, well, yeah, everyone's going to buy in. Then well, well, like yeah, no, no, duh, they're going to buy in because they don't have a choice. But look, I mean, look at our championship now. Why would why would we think that we need to change our championship? I mean, it's the success that it's having. It's continued growth. Um, even our dual meets are continuing to. They're getting bigger and bigger, right? Our sport in the collegiate level is is it's doing well. Uh, social media has been great. The TV coverage has been great. Um, so to say, well, hey, I mean, that's why you know we're you, you focus on you get what you focus on, right? So if we keep saying, hey, dual meets don't matter, dual meets don't matter, so. Uh, you know, we need to double down on dual meets. Well, then you you, you know you kind of get what you argue for. You're, you you know if you argue for your limitations, they're yours, right? That's what they say. So we should be focusing on what we're doing great and what we're doing well. That's just you know that's that's just 101 you know success out of every book you'd ever read, I guess. But um, why we're focusing on well, we don't have a dual championship. Well, well, our sport's not set up for a dual championship right now, right? I mean, we have too many teams that can't compete in a dual championship. I mean, we, we we'll be fine. Penn State's going to be fine if it turned to a dual meet championship. We can compete, right? If it's an individual championship, we can compete. Some teams do have are set up to be more competitive in dual meets, so it seems like those are the same coaches that are pushing for a dual meet championship. Not all of them, not all of them. I, I wouldn't say that, but a lot of them are. So it's just human nature to try to do what's in your best interest and and to see things from your point of view. And I, we're the same way, you know. I do the same thing, but I do think, I mean, even from the beginning when we were fighting the national duels, you know, we were speaking for a lot of smaller schools that were calling me and saying, hey, you know, this is going to kill us. We can't do this. And and I'm saying, well, why don't you speak up? And they say, well, no one's listening to me. Well, now it just looks like I'm the only one that's, uh, you know, that's fighting this fight when there's. You know, there's a lot of coaches that – so I, I deal – I don't know. I, I don't have the answer. I'm just saying um, that's why I, you know, I spoke up and, and sent that tweet just to say, hey, you know, you don't don't use this to, to, to try to change our championship in March um, because, the, you know, the, the it wasn't followed through, right? And it's still successful, though. I mean, you're going to look at this, this – you know, it's a, it's a big deal right now. People are excited about the match. Our fans are excited. All fans are excited. It's a great matchup uh, with Penn State and Oklahoma State. You know, speaking to the the anti kale crowd in terms of your intent with this bowl series, uh, you're you're saying that uh, you know don't use this as a judge for it, and you know there might be the opposition that says, well, this is exactly your plan. You you knew this would fail. That's why you're like, okay, yeah, we can't have duels because this doesn't matter. And they're kind of, I mean, it's a conspiracy theory, but uh, it's more than just the internet trolls that are bringing this up. I've actually heard uh, you know coaches at the Division One level kind of echo this kind of sentiment. Uh, what's your take on, on that particular position that you, you, this was all kind of a calculated plan by you? It's like, all right, we're going to put this in and then we can never talk about this again because uh, it'll, it'll die. Well, yeah, I mean, that doesn't make any sense because if this, if this fails, 
they're going right back to what they were doing before, right? They're going back to saying, all right, we got to have a dual championship, and uh, it's points got to carry over to the Nationals. If you win, you get this many points, or you're going to change uh, and give the team championship from a dual meet. So that doesn't – that it's just not – it can't be true because that's not what we want. That's what we don't want. So we want this to be successful so, you know, that push will go away. Right. And that's, um, you know, from the beginning. Uh, and plus, the, the plan wasn't really followed anyways. You know, I think if, you know, it, we fought, we followed the plan completely last year. We, you know, we, we had no say. I didn't call and say, hey, we want to wrestle this team or that team. You know, we thought we would probably be wrestling North Carolina State because they had a head to head win. Um, but we didn't we didn't complain. We said, hey, you you decide who is in this bowl and we're here. We're ready. And this year, same thing. You know, we're not complaining. You tell us where to go. We're going. That was part of the plan, right? So, I mean, we've always done what we said we, we would do, right? We have always done that. From the beginning, we were very clear. We do not want the dual championship uh, to be taken over by the NCA and be how a team championship is awarded. So that's why we didn't participate in the national duels. Everyone knew that. We didn't change. We didn't waver. You know, we've been – we've been stuck and, and firm in what we believe and we're consistent, right? So, I mean, that doesn't mean I don't, you know, people don't like me or, or, or not. That's not, that's not really that important. I, I'm, I'm going to do what I believe and, and, uh, our staff, we're going to do what we believe, but it would make no sense for me to say, well, I, I want this to fail. You know, the plan we set up would not fail. It was set up to not fail. You know, it was, uh, and I, you know, you can go back and read it, but, um, the, the, the way it was changed. Well, now you're rolling the dice, right? You're rolling the dice where you don't you don't decide who's in the event until the last second. Well, you know, we can't do that. You need to have sites set. You need to have sponsorships set. You you need we need to be selling tickets with our with the you know our, our university has marketing dollars that sell each one of our tickets. Well, if we're hosting a bowl, that needs to be included in those marketing dollars, right? We don't have another budget. Well, hey, we just made the uh, so so. You know, there's a lot of things that were set up originally to where it would be successful, and then you could build from there. Um, but, yeah, so, I mean, people can say and look at it however they want, but, you know, we've been consistent from the very beginning. There's no there's no way to dispute that. Is the timing another issue? with? I mean, it seems to be logical. It's kind of almost a loaded question that, you know, some teams are like, no, we're getting beat up right before our conference tournament, and this is echoed mainly from the Big Ten that, okay, we've already got the biggest grind of the schedule anyway. Now you're going to give us, you know, with the old tournament format, two or three more duels before our conference schedule, or in this case, one. And then you circle back and point out that, you know, your job is to take care of Penn State. So uh, the alternative viewpoint here is, okay, why why should people be mad at Tom Brands? Uh, not to call him out on the carpet, but to, to use him as the relevant example here, uh, that he's going to have to look out for Iowa and wrestling Edinburgh in this situation is the best for his team. So, uh, do we get into a contradiction here, or do we get with, with the fact that like, no, this, they're two completely different uh, topics we're discussing? Well, I think that's why you say, hey, this is what we agreed to, right? We agreed to it, and this is why it makes sense. So if Iowa was wrestling Oklahoma State, well, we'd be wrestling the next team down the line, right? It's not, well, I'm not in the final, so I, I'm going to wrestle whoever I want, because then that, that, that beats down the, um, you know, the, the whole idea where people aren't going to want to support that. Right in the future, I mean, we're excited. We, you know, we're pumped up. We get a wrestle for a, a dual championship, um, but it just has to be. It has to be consistent so one team doesn't have an advantage over another. Right, where we we're getting beat up, but you're not because you pick your dual meet. Right, I mean, that, it can't be like that, or people aren't going to support it. And that that's. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you, you you take care of your team and you do the best you can. But if we have something that we're agreed we agreed to. That's why you agree to things before, you know, the, these little things come up or before everything happens and then you, you have to decide. It's just like, uh, you know, with the seating of an individual championship or, you know, you should have your criteria set before you go into the seating meeting. Otherwise, it is unbelievable, right? And uh, some coaches are the same regardless of the situation and they're consistent in what their values are. And some aren't, right? So you have to have rules in place before. And I'm not, I'm not calling anybody out. I'm just saying that's what we have to do moving forward if we want this to work. But, you know, we're trying to make it work. If it's not going to work, well, then I'm just telling you it's going to go back 
and there's going to be a push, and it's been going on. It's never gone away. We know what's going on behind the scenes. They're trying to push to change our our championship in March. Now, do you think this is uh, changing the championship in March? Do you think that that's a more of a, a systematic approach to uh, the change, or do you think it's like, okay, well, certain teams are hoarding the talent. They, they believe this levels the playing field. I mean, you're getting blue-chip kids for – uh, less than blue chip money at Penn State. That's happened at Iowa. That's happened at Oklahoma State. It's happened at Minnesota. It's happened at, at the big power programs. Uh, you know, at Penn State. You you haven't gone. You haven't had a whole lot of. You haven't had undefeated seasons every year you've been there. So you've been susceptible to dual meet. Uh, same with Iowa. Same with Oklahoma State. So w- w- where do you think the difference is between uh, the mindset now or what it was four years ago when this thing first came out, or do you think that's changed at all? Well, I think, um, again, if you're trying to get your best team, and this was our argument then, a dual meet is not the right uh, formula to to find out who the best team is. So if you really want to know who's the best team, you have to – you have to wrestle your team against the field, right? I don't think you can really argue that, right? I mean, oh, you can you can argue meet. it. You can clearly argue it, but but <laughs> it's I think could, it's more you philosophical. Argue it, but it doesn't make any sense, right? Because say say we have all the number two ranked guys in the country, and we wrestle a team that has all the number one ranked guys in the country, and we lose every match. Well, we score zero points, right? Say they beat they beat us thirty to zero. That that's not. It's just not realistic. That's not the way it should be. I mean, dual meets are subject to the random draw of individual matchups, right? Where you you put your team in a tournament with the rest of the best of the, the country, you find out who the best team is. That's it, right? And you could change the scoring of the national tournament because right now it's very heavy towards guys that are winning, right? I mean, a guy that takes eighth versus a guy that takes first place, there's a huge difference in the points they score. So before you change the championship to a dual format, I mean, you the next thing would be just look at the, you know, the scoring if you want it to be more, uh, you know, of a team. But but you want those big matches to count, right? You want the semifinal match to be worth more because that makes it more exciting, right? You want the finals to be worth four points because it's the finals. It's on ESPN Live. You want that to be worth more. A wrestleback match in the second round is worth half a point, right? But less people are following that. So, I mean, it makes sense. Um, but it, it's not about, well, we have a better chance to win this way or that way. It's just, you know, it, it's more exciting. It's, it's better for, for the sport because more teams can be competitive. You, you move to a dual format, far fewer teams can compete in a dual meet. That's just, a, you know, that's just a, the way it is, right? I mean, you get two guys that run through a tournament and can score – 30 points well they're, they're getting their team up there pretty high in in the, the nc finish that's a big deal to that school and i think that's part of the reason that we still have over 70 teams and when men's volleyball is and and men's uh gymnastics and the other Olymp- male olympic sports are are around 20 right so i mean you have to stop and look at those things a little bit yeah, I mean, we can go down the dual meet versus tournament rabbit hole because, you know, there's always going to be the points. That you're going to look at the Edinburgh. You're going to look at the American. You're going to look at the Arizona State, which lost to Division II Central Oklahoma in a dual meet, and they were 5-13 and 13 the year they finished 6th. So I think, you know, there's there's outliers that can also go to to counteract that point or like, uh, say, with rankings, you know, NC State a couple of years ago, uh, I think Papalizio's first year, uh, beats number 15 American. Well, American was like 7-11 and 11 in dual meets, and they had – you know, they had three guys in the top 10, which gave them the tournament points. And again, that then you can get in the polls or whatever. But, uh, you know, the tournament format rankings, you know, you can have two guys finish second and you're you're a top 15 team and you go 0-18 in dual meets. So, you know, maybe it's not representative of how, how strong a team is. Again, that's a rabbit hole we can argue until we're blue in the face. And uh, I don't think we got the time for it today. But because, you know, there's philosophical differences on people see your point of view, people see the other point of view. Uh, not that to say that... Uh, you know, one's you know it's 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 peanut butter and jelly, or it's vanilla versus chocolate in some cases. But moving towards solutions versus talking about the problem, do you feel that there is going to be a solution here that'll be equitable and fair to the seventy-seven Division One wrestling programs they have right now? Well, I think um, the, the 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 way our our championship is set up now is right. It is. Um, 
But I don't know. I don't know where where we're gonna go from this. I mean, it is set up. So you say, uh, you know, a team loses a dual meet. If you win a dual meet, that's a big deal for your school, right? It's a big deal. So it, just be, yeah, you can turn around and finish higher than at the nationals. But the way your dual meets matter, right? I mean, coaches are fired and and hired based on dual meets. Um, they should probably be more than they aren't. Right, because uh, you know sometimes we have coaches that are in positions, you know, for a lot longer than they should be because there's not enough pressure. But um, you know, the, the answer going forward, I, I think we have a system that's working right now with our championship form. You know, if you want to create, uh, you know, other events and, and blow things up, uh, dual meet wise. I mean, you're trying to create TV worthy events. I mean, this this event this weekend that's TV worthy. Right. I mean, we have a dual championship. Um, you know, my understanding is is uh, NBC or somebody wanted to play it live. But I mean, but Flo has the rights to it. Right. And, and rightfully so. You know, they're not going to let somebody uh, air this live if they, they you know, this is a big opportunity for them to cash in. And they're the ones that sign the contract uh, to host or, or to air Oklahoma State's home matches. Right. Um, but th- this is a TV worthy event. Right, and that's what we need. It's creating, uh, you know, exciting dual meets, which is what we need, and and we're seeing that. You're seeing larger crowds, but to to sit back and and you know one of the excuses is saying, well, you know, dual meets don't matter, and that's why I can't get anybody to my matches. I mean, that just drives me crazy when you say that. When people say that, it's unbelievable, right? And and the same people that are saying, well, dual meets don't matter. That's why I can't get people to my mat to my matches are the ones that are that want to change. Uh, and 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 make dual meets matter when dual meets matter to everybody else. They matter to us. They matter to our fans. So on and on in circles and in and out and all that <laughs> that good stuff. So I mean, you could you could go, but I just you know I mean, wh- why are we even? Do we have to fight about this stuff and keep fighting about it and we can't agree on anything? I mean, I just or can we just like. Build wherever you are. Build right wherever you are as a coach. Make your program better. Make it stronger. If you have 500 fans at your matches average this year, all right, we'll figure out how to get to 600 there next year. And just build. Do better. Get your grades up. You know, I mean, if every coach and we're doing that and trust and give some credibility and some respect to the other coaches and give them a chance. All right, you know, let's make some progress. Well. I mean that that's how you grow, right? It, we're we're looking for that secret, okay, you know, it's not my fault, you know, it's not my fault that I can't get people to my matches. It's because well this dual meet doesn't matter, you know. Like are you what? Cuz you know, cuz as soon as you make the dual meets matter, well then it's just going to be another excuse and another excuse. So I mean that's my mindset. I mean you got to take what you have and you just got to build. You got to you got to move forward and progress and and uh and if you're not, don't blame, don't blame, you don't, you, you wouldn't let your kids get away with that. You wouldn't let your wrestlers get away with that men, mentality. It just, you know, you gotta, you gotta take your own medicine as a coach and, and continue to build and, and focus on the positives and, and be coachable and right. I mean, so yeah, I don't have an answer for you there. I mean, you know, what's the future, but because we haven't even had a chance to, to talk about it because all we're doing is fighting to stop from changing our current championship. That's been a 10 year process. And that's the whole reason that, you know, we're here right now, probably talking again. (laughs) Yeah, almost a year since the last time we actually had to discuss this topic. Now, uh, one last thing, and this is kind of off off the beaten path of what we're discussing, although it does take the hypothetical in the world that, okay, say say that say we're done with this format at the end of this year. Do you believe that there's value? And you talked about TV events, and this is one I've been kind of hoping would happen eventually, whether the NWCA duels benefited or not, is the scheduling with the Big Ten. Uh, one, I've got a vested interest in seeing the Virginia duels return to prominence, and the Big Ten currently schedules through that weekend. But say you go to the East-West format like they have in football, you've got your set conference duels, then that 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 leaves, I think that's one less date or two less dates out, uh, you've got an East champion versus a West champion. Uh, what do you think about the concept of East-West, You know, first of all, separating them and then having a, a Big Ten championship dual meet that, one, is good for television, uh, You know, not like right in front of the conference tournament, but say this weekend, you know, next year, okay, East versus West champs, you know who you got, you can build it up. It's already got built-in TV with the Big Ten network. W- what do you say to that type of situation? I think that'd be great. 
right? I mean, it, it works for football, right? And football has an entire staff, and, and it's – I mean, even this whole concept, this bowl concept, people say, well, it's Kales or, you know, Penn State's. This isn't my design or our design. This this is a design that we looked at football and we copied their their model that worked for them and we adjusted it to work for us, right? It's not anything original. It's not – there's no, wow, you know, good or bad. It's just – um, and, it, you know, th- this concept works for the Big Ten in wrestling. And we talk about that in our Big Ten coaches meetings, but it always comes down with the administrators. They're saying, well, you know, we don't really, you know, schools don't want to pay last second travel, um, you know, to for the teams that are going to this conference championship. But that's what we're doing with this bowl championship. So I, I would support that 100%. You have an East-West and then. Um, you have a championship duel, a uh, conference championship duel on TV. It's a big deal. Uh, if it works for football, I mean, it's going to, you know, it's probably going to work for us. So, I mean, I think that would be good. I mean, we want to wrestle some of the, the teams that we wouldn't on a regular basis. And maybe we have to, uh, you know, in our own conference, we'd have to figure out how to do that. But, yeah, more dates would be um, would be great. The Big Ten, uh, you know, really takes a lot of our flexibility away. All right, we couldn't go to the scuffle. Well, I mean, we could have, but then we would have had to leave, get home and leave two days or three days later, you know, to go on the road for Nebraska and Minnesota, which, you know, it doesn't really make sense. So I'm with you on that one. Yeah, because and just continuing down that rabbit hole just for a hair, you know, we're no pun intended, we're looking at how – college realignment has been in fact, impacted. You're like, okay, well, uh, we need this many teams so we can have qualify for a conference championship game. The Sun Belt of all conferences is 12 teams. Conference USA is 12 teams. Uh, the, you know, the Big Ten's 14. You've got to have enough teams to make a conference championship game. We're seeing that with some of the contraction of the conferences. The big, you know, we've got the Big Ten with 14. That one's that one's simple. Well, you can't do that in the ACC, but you can do that in the EIWA with, you know, the Patriot and Ivy segments possibly, uh, you know, creating a form at there so uh you know we're looking at you know we could have more than just the big 10 do this but that's just that's kind of my own pet project that i've been trying to eyeball for years but uh anyway coach sanderson you've got uh you know final thoughts on anything regarding Stillwater, the duels uh this season pinning david taylor's hair frank malnero's hair your lack of hair anything like that you want to throw out there um no, I'm good. I'm good. I think uh, we have a lot, a lot of excitement in college wrestling, and um, you know, people are talking about college wrestling even, even over this dual thing. I mean, I don't, you know, I think we got to stick together as a sport and as coaches and and uh, support each other. But I mean, we do need to, you don't, you know, we don't want to destroy one another. I mean, we do when we wrestle, but I think that we're pretty much, you know, we all want the same thing, right? I think we all have more in common than we have. Uh, you know, not in common, and that's we want to see wrestling grow, and and we have different ideas, and it's okay, right? It's okay to to have different opinions. Um, we don't have to hate each other, and and uh, I think that's important, right? We don't need to beat each other up, and and and, but yeah, we want to kick each other's butts when we wrestle, but you know, we 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 all do want the same thing, and we want wrestling to uh, to grow and and to to prosper and and to continue to get bigger and better, and we want more opportunities for kids. Um, to experience college wrestling. And so I think, you know, if you think and focus on what we have uh, alike, it's it's a lot greater than, than, than what we're in opposition with. So I think that's important and it's something I try, I try to focus on more than I should probably focus on it more than I do, but there you go. That's right, folks. Fruit pies for all here on episode 311 of the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. I say the number specifically because when we have people like Kale Sanderson on, we've, when we have Tom Brands on, we have John Smith on, we have a lot of first-time listeners, people who might be discovering the Short Time Wrestling Podcast for the first time. This is the 311th episode of the show. This is the flagship program of the Matt Talk Podcast Network at matttalkonline.com. You can find 19 19 different shows, 19 different podcasts that you can subscribe to and listen to on demand. The audio medium podcasting, it's about 13 years old. It has been rolling here in wrestling. We've got over about 40 shows now uh, that, that cover wrestling, 19 here on this network. But if you want to find all sorts of wrestling information, on demand wrestling content, matttalkonline.com. This, the Short Time Wrestling Podcast. Me, I'm Jason Bryant. Uh, you've probably never heard of me, but uh, that, that's not important right now. But 
couple things that are. If you are a regular listener to this program and other programs on the Mad Talk Podcast Network and you like what you hear and you want to help us continue to put out exclusive on-demand content, unmatched, not found anywhere else, go to madtalkonline.com slash join the team. You can contribute there uh, depending on what you feel like joining. You can also get the daily wrestling email newsletter. This is something that is sent out every single morning, and you will get it as you open up your email, your inbox, and be like, okay, what wrestling stuff do I need to know? Boom, I give it to you. It is a curated wrestling newsletter. Top stories of the previous day, uh, some overnight depending on what time I go to sleep. So you will wake up, and it will take you. Uh, if there's something relevant on Flow Wrestling, it'll take you there. If there's something re- relevant on IA Wrestle, it'll take you there. If there's Something relevant about wrestling in the Washington Post, it'll take you there. The Matt.com, track wrestling. It is a non discriminatory outlet that gives you the wrestling news you need first thing in the morning. If it's good, it's going to be in there. So that's how it works. You can sign up for that for free, matttalkonline.com slash news. Anything else I need to throw at you? No, not really. National Duel's coming up this week, and I want to thank everybody who listened to the Julia Salata interview. I I think you need to go back and listen to that because it's Women's Wrestling Week. We're finishing things up. We're going into the national duels on the Division I side. February 19th is the last day of the dual meet season for college wrestling, folks. Postseason's here. Postseason's here. I'll be in California next week at the Pac-12. So, you know, dual meets are gone and February 19th. So, And you can also, the only place you can find every division's dual meet standings by conference, by region, MattTalkOnline.com. So there's a lot of stuff if this is your first time discovering the show and the website. I've been doing this a long time. A lot of resources at MattTalkOnline.com that you may not be aware of. And it's also listener supported. So anything you feel like contributing to the network, again, MattTalkOnline.com slash join the team. MattTalkOnline.com slash news. That is the free email newsletter. And to subscribe to this show. This show specifically, matttalkonline.com slash get short time. Now, if you have used, been using your phone and you, you like overcasts and things like that, you, or you don't know what a podcast is or a podcatcher, if you've got an iPhone, a relatively newer iPhone, say you've got the, the latest update of iOS, there's a purple icon on it that says podcasts. Now, for those of you who are, who are aware of what the podcast app is, uh, you, you can just tune tune me out for about 10 seconds here. Or hit that 30 second ahead button because I'm just explaining it to those who was uh, like, hey, I want to get this on my phone. Go to go to iTunes dot com slash Matt talk. That will actually open up every single show within the iTunes store, either in your browser or on your phone. And you can subscribe to each show individually or you can hit the master Matt talk online feed, which is every single show in the network. Boom, delivered. So uh, if you need a little primer on that, you can go to madtalkonline.com slash listen, figure out how to do it. Or if you just want to listen to this show, I'm throwing a lot of calls to action at you. You know, we've got iOS and and, uh, Android apps for free. So I realize I break a lot of rules here of podcasting when I throw a bunch of calls to action at you if this is your first time viewing. But you know what? Sometimes you, my regular listener, you need need a reminder too, because if you want the short time app, that's free. Uh, MattTalkOnline.com slash, you know, iOS app and slash Android app for Android. That's what I got. That's what I got. Kale Sanderson went uh, about an hour. I'll be catching you on the flip side. Got a lot of good shows coming up in the next couple weeks. Check out the Ice Hour D3 show. Check out uh, what we've got. World Wrestling Resource episode released earlier today. Fantastic with Dr. Dave Kirby. All that at MattTalkOnline.com. But for now, it's short time. And I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me because you've always got time for short time. The Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.